finding antiderivatives is much harder than finding derivatives. And a lot of calculus too is dedicated to learning to do that. At the moment, the antiderivatives we can find are very limited. We can find antiderivatives. Well, if we know a corresponding derivative. So for example, the secant of x times the tangent of x. If we want the antiderivative of this, all we can do is cast our mind back and ask ourselves, do we know a function that has this as its derivative? And after a little thought, we hopefully come up with the secant of x. And this is n antiderivative of this. You could add any constant. You could have the secant of x plus 3. That would also be an antiderivative. On the other hand, If I asked for the derivative of the antiderivative, sorry, of the tangent, we could cast our mind back and ask, do we know a function whose derivative is the tangent? And after giving that a little thought, we should conclude that no, we've never looked at a function whose derivative is the tangent. So at this point, we don't have any way of taking this antiderivative. Probably the most complicated example we might look at at this moment is something like five times the sine of x. Can we find an antiderivative of this? Well, the derivative of the cosine is almost the sine. The derivative of the cosine is the negative sine. Ergo, the derivative of the negative cosine is the positive sine. But what about this five? Well, constants have the special property that when you take a derivative, you just ignore them pretty much. If we put a five in front of the cosine, it would still be there. 
when we take the derivative. And so we have worked out an antiderivative. Another relatively complicated example would be the antiderivative of a power function. Say the antiderivative of x cubed. Do we know a function whose derivative is x cubed? Almost, but not quite. When we take the derivative of a power function, it bumps the power down. So if we took the derivative of x to the fourth, that would give us an x cubed, but it would also give us this undesired four. We can, however, use the same trick we used up here. Constants just sit there when we take the derivative. So if we put a one fourth instead in front of x to the fourth, that would still be there when we take the derivative. And then the one fourth and the four would cancel. So we have worked out an antiderivative.